For Action News, I'm Anas Moska. We here at AXHA are pleased to see the New York Times take note of the serious crisis of antibiotic resistance. And yet it's unfortunate that they've omitted perhaps the most important reason why we find ourselves in this very dangerous place, the FDA. The editorial lays the blame on the pharmaceutical companies, explaining they backed out of research simply because it's not profitable enough for companies to discover new antibiotics. But this isn't the whole story. Antibiotic research had been quite profitable, in fact, until the year 2000, as you can see from this graph, when the FDA placed strict policy on antibiotic research trials. Axios Dr. Josh Bloom explains. The Times got the facts correct, but they omitted the key point. Maybe the most important reason why uh, antibiotics are not being developed is because of the FDA, who in the late 90s through you know, early 2000s started making some very strange and counterproductive rules about the statistical power of clinical trials. And this was done by statisticians there. Um, to try and tighten up the data. So in order to do that, they were asking for roughly twice as many patients to be enrolled so that they could have slightly better statistics. Back in 2002, um, Dave Schles, our advisor, who was uh, the head of infectious disease research at Wyeth, where I was at the time, uh, was stunned to find out that the FDA was requiring essentially double the patients. And uh, somebody from Bristol-Myers spoke to him off the record and said, it'll take us seven years and we'll have to go outside of the U.S. to find enough people to run a trial for a new antibiotic. When, when the FDA changed the rules overnight for absolutely no good reason, then all the drug companies, the major ones, started dropping out. And within a few years, most of them were gone. And it's that... 10, 15 year hole that we're now experiencing, during which time uh, virtually no antibiotics were being developed. This just goes to show how much trouble a really bad policy can cause. So basically they drove most of the companies out 10 years ago and their microbiologists are all fired and mopping floors someplace or whatever. So you can't just snap your fingers and set up a microbiology lab. It takes a lot of experience. It's kind of an art to growing the bacteria. So this is not something you can restart overnight. It's going to take a while. And this is a direct result of a terrible policy. The editorial also points to the prospect of untreatable gonorrhea, something Dr. Bloom wrote about nearly two years ago in the New York Post. Could we be ahead of the times? We think so. And to read this story and others, you can head to our website, action.org. While you're there, don't forget to also sign up for your daily dose of news delivered right to your inbox. For Aksha, I'm Anna Samovska.